Um, it's really important for me to... These, these, uh, these sessions are really important sessions for me as well, in that what they do is they help expose a lot of my own emotions while I'm speaking. And so what I try to do halfway th when I'm in the break is I try to feel what I'm feeling uh, from, from the audience and also what's going on inside of myself. And so it's really important for me to be able to do that and uh, stay connected with myself and then do the second half of the session. The emotions that I've felt so far from the audience is, is that there is this deep resistance to loving yourselves. And many of the spirits around us also have a deep resistance to loving themselves. And, and because of that, and if I can talk about some of the justifications perhaps for a little while of why we have so much resistance to loving ourselves. One of the main justifications we have is, uh, is this justification of I'm um, helping someone. Um, so obviously the reason why I come and do these talks is because I want to help people. Does that make sense? So then there's this thing going on inside of me that says, all right, these people need help. I, I want to help them. And then I get more people coming up wanting help, more people coming up wanting help, more people coming up wanting help. And everyone wants personal help, of course. Everyone thinks that I've not heard of their situation before and their specific, <laughs> and their specific particular... And you, if you can just imagine 2,000 years of existence, you've heard a lot in 2,000 years, right? About a person's groups of emotions. So it's highly unlikely that I have not heard about your specific problem and all of the truths that are being taught all apply to all of these issues. They are global truths in the sense that they suit every situation. But of course, most people don't believe that. They believe that there's some kind of unique thing with their situation that that particular law and this particular idea and that particular concept does not actually apply to. And the truth is that God's truths apply right across the board. So that's the thing we need to bear in mind. But my issue is... I feel like I want to help, so I start helping, and then I help the next person, and then I help the next person. And to be frank with you, I'm not going to be able to do that with six and a half billion people. And to be frank with myself, I need to stop doing it soon, otherwise I'm going to just exhaust myself. So this motion of helping someone, I'm helping someone, causes me to step away from loving self. Can you see that? Now that happens with yourself a lot too, right? Well, you think about how many times you get drawn into helping someone and it's exhausting you and you're feeling depleted and ah oh, gee you know and then you realize gee it's because I'm not loving myself again you know I'm trying to do too much for somebody else so we often justify love as helping someone so then we go down the track of all right I'm being loving to them but in the process we sacrifice ourselves and remember I said if you sacrifice yourself you're not being loving to yourself or to the other person then there's other things that go on for myself too. Is that I feel very, there's a feeling in me that I'm working through of unworthiness, which I've talked about before. And one facet of this feeling of unworthiness is this facet of, uh, of feeling like I'm not anywhere near as good as I used to be. And a lot of people, as they get older, feel this emotion. You know what I mean? Like, so many of us, as we get older and older, we're like, we're, we're 60, we're not the 20-year-old guy who can get all those things and jump the hurdles and all of those kind of things. We're, we are now the 60-year-old person with limits in our physical body and so we feel like we're not the person we used to be and then there's a lot of emotions that come up about that. And a lot of childhood emotions too of you're not the person that your mum and dad wanted you to be in there. And so I've got a lot of projections aimed at me at the moment from the spirit world and also from here that I'm not the person that other people want me to be. So they meet Jesus and they're highly disappointed is probably the best way to put it. And uh, last week we were staying with, a um, oh, week before last, we were staying with Monica, wasn't it? Week before last, I forget track now. It was week before last we stayed with Monica. Where are you, Monica? There she is. And, uh, and Monica decided she wanted to do a channeling session one morning. So, so we did a bit of channeling and a group of four spirits from the first century came. They were four spirits who used to be my friends in the first century, um, who were, you know, they called themselves my disciples. And uh, they, 
in the channeling, they called me master, as, as they did in the first century. And um, these four spirits had actually been in the hills for the last 2,000 years. Um, what happened was that uh, when I began a relationship with Mary in the first century, a lot of the people around me had a lot of projections of what I should have been. And what, you know, and having a relationship with a woman um, was something that, uh, for a start, was in their eyes demeaning myself. And then having a relationship with someone who they viewed angrily towards Mary, that Mary wasn't a good enough woman for myself, they actually had a lot of projections at Mary as well. And in their anger and rage, um, they eventually stopped following me in the first century. And, uh, and they've been in this state of anger and rage ever since. In their anger and rage, they also did a lot of things to Mary that uh, were quite damaging and, uh, and, and also instigated a lot of things in the, from the spirit world, uh, sorry, instigated a lot of things towards Mary that were quite damaging as well, including involving some of the events of her death. So there, there is quite a lot of, like, there was quite a lot of rage and that from these spirits. And one of the biggest emotions they had was this emotion that uh, I was not sufficient for them because I didn't do what they expected. Um, many of you have had that emotion already with me where I'm not doing or being what you expect and so therefore that creates doubts and other emotions in you. And also I have the emotion myself that I'm nowhere near as good as I used to be. So that just triggers that emotion and it's an emotion that I need to work my way through and I'm still working my way through. And so what happens with that emotion a lot of times is that I'm not loving towards myself. I try and give too much and as a result of that I feel quite depleted and then I go home and sort through it and think I've sort through it and do a bit of quite a lot of emotional work generally. But I'm slowly improving with the emotion. But the degree of my unworthiness is quite extreme. Um, if you can imagine living in a 20-second sphere state, um, which is, to be frank with you, none of you can imagine uh, at this point what that means. Um, and if you can imagine having the contrast between being in the state and actually coming to earth and being in this state, you would understand my degree of unworthiness, which is the contrast between the two states. So, so it's been quite overpowering for me at times and, uh, and I find it quite difficult to deal with emotionally. And I have a lot of grief about what I've lost and not just what I've lost external to myself, but, but what I've lost um, sort of inside of myself. And so I've been trying to work my way through those emotions uh, quite a lot. So, um, but the problem is that, it, is that oftentimes then I put myself in situations that are quite unloving um, and get bombarded with a lot of unloving actions and then sort of have to go home and have some good cries about the fact that I did that to myself. So um, there's quite a lot of emotions still within me about this group of emotions of unworthiness. And, and I'm finding it quite good now because I'm getting at them, whereas for many years I wasn't getting at them. Um, and if you, can imagine, if you can imagine too, there's millions and millions and millions of Christian spirits who are actually in the hells of the spirit world. They're in the hells not because they intellectually didn't know the truth, but they're in the hells because they emotionally didn't practice the truth. Does that make sense? So they had all of these emotions in them of, you know, for instance, they had emotions of rage in them and that they projected at other people. Many, many Christians, if I can use Christians in quotations in this case, went to war and justified the war through the Bible, for example. Many Christians um, were heavy religious practices firm, dogmatic for their faith, but in the process of being firm and dogmatic for their faith, damaged a lot of people in their environment due to their firmness, right the way down to condemning them and even burning them. Right? And if you can imagine all of these different things happening all the way through history, which have happened since the third century right the way through to now, 
You can imagine how many Christians there must be who have been involved in these kind of actions for nearly a period of 2,000 years. So many of them pass into the spirit world and pass into the spirit world in a place that's quite sad and, uh, and quite dark. Uh, not because they're Christians, but because of the actions they perpetrated that were unloving towards others. Now, when they pass, they expect to be next to Jesus, near God, in the heaven. Can you imagine that? So you've perpetrated these different actions in the justifying them by saying that you're actually doing it for God. And then you pass into the spirit world and now you find yourself in the hills and you're not next to God as you expected. You've never seen Jesus all the time you've been in the spirit world. And then all of a sudden, Jesus rocks up on earth. And you know it's him. Um, can you see how much anger there might be towards? So there's quite a lot of anger getting directed towards me from all sorts and particularly between to, towards myself and Mary, but obviously a lot towards myself because of feeling that I'm to blame for their predicament. The feeling that they have is that I did things and said things that never came true. And of course, it could never come true for them because they weren't practicing them. They believed them in their mind, but they didn't feel them in their heart. And so because they believed it in their mind, but didn't feel it in their heart, they didn't practice them. They actually practiced many things that are quite damaging. And as a result of that, arrive in the spirit world in quite a dark place. But they have a lot of feelings of blame and anger towards me specifically. And so if you could imagine millions and millions and millions of spirit in that state of space. And then on top of that, historically, these Christians have done a lot of damage to other faiths. All through human history from shortly after my passing, there started being wars between people who claimed to be following myself and then people who were of pagan, what they claimed to be pagan faiths. Now, as a result of that, a lot of the, the, the religious uh, factions of other types of religions who were willing to be involved in violence felt that Christians were the perpetrator of violence towards themselves. And of course, they then feel that I have a degree of responsibility for that. So not only do I have groups of <laughs> Christian spirits who are very much in a rage and angry with me, I have also have a group of spirits who are non-Christian, <laughs> historically, who are also in a, group, in, a, in a space of rage and anger with me. Then on top of that, <laughs> if that's not enough, <laughs> emotionally, to deal with from the projection of anger, there's a whole other group of people who were a part of our first century existence who, um, due to their emotional blockages, didn't ever deal with the emotions that we've been talking about. And as a result of that, they got into this space where they became quite angry and resentful and purposefully tried to make my life and anybody's life associated with me quite difficult. And so these ones have been around for many hundreds and thousands or well, thousands of years, the last 2,000 years, trying to damage any person who basically is associated with me. So I'm sorry about that if you've started to receive some of that projection. The, the issue is, is that there is a huge amount of spirits in the spirit world who have a vested interest in you not following the truth or practicing it. Right. Their vested interest is that if you practice the truth and your light shines to others, what will happen is that they will lose their level of influence and control over the earth. And it's their influence and control over the earth which causes them to actually want to continue the damage that they're doing to the earth and to people on it. They feel they get enjoyment from it. Does that make sense? They feel they get enjoyment from it. And because of that, they feel they enjoy this process, any person who starts standing up for truth and love 
is going to start to receive some kind of attacks from the spirit world. Does that make sense? Now, if we can remember that in all of our interactions with each other and with others, we will own our own emotions about it. We will actually feel our own emotions about this feeling of attack. If we don't do that, we will feel like attacking in return or reviling in return, as the Bible would say, right? So when somebody attacks you, if often you will feel like you want to attack in return. And my suggestion is to really, that is the time inside of yourself to really own your emotions. Because if you don't own your emotions in that particular situation, you are placing yourself in a position where these groups of spirits who are still in the spirit world in these very dark places can now influence you greatly in your own progression towards God. And remember, here on earth, we, have, we can actually degrade our condition quite rapidly. And by the way, you can degrade your condition in the spirit world as well. But you think if you arrive in the spirit world in a space where you're angry and resentful towards others, and all of a sudden you've got carte blanche to do something to somebody on earth that they don't even know about, you're going to be highly driven to harm that person on earth and do whatever is at your disposal to harm them. And obviously that is going to direct, degrade your condition even further. So there are a whole group of spirits in the spirit world who still as yet have not stopped their evil acts. Right. Now if you can understand that from a spiritual perspective, that all we need do is act in harmony with truth and love and feel all of our own emotions. So those three things, humility, truth and love, those three things I keep saying all the time, if you focus on that, these spirits cannot influence you negative in any long-term way. But as soon as you deny the expression of any of those things, truth, love, or owning all of your own emotions, humility, as soon as you deny that, you are now leaving yourself open to the external control. By the way, external control of anyone, someone on earth or in the spirit world. Does everyone follow that? So my suggestion is, I am aware right at the moment many of you are under a lot of external pressure. That external pressure is not just because of your own emotional condition. The external pressure is because there is a group of spirits in the spirit world that are very, very opposed to anything like this occurring on the earth. And they will do anything they possibly can to influence you or others to harm you. Now, understand that this also is okay because you will work through your emotions through this process. Does that, everyone follows that? It's not going to be a harmful thing to you in the long run. But if you can understand that every time you skip into this place of anger and resentment, you are now just harming yourself and attracting anyone else in that same state straight to you. Now, the reason why I bring up this is because my spirit friends from 2,000 years ago that we talked to last week had done this for 2,000 years. And we can easily do this for a long period of time if we're not careful, where we do not own our own emotions and justify our anger, resentment and other types of emotions towards another person for whatever they have done whether they did it in error or in truth. It doesn't really matter whether they did it in error or in truth. As soon as I get into this space, I am now leaving myself wide open. Now, one of the things that affect myself and Mary a lot is that we worry a lot, which is an emotion we need to work our way through, about the, our personal safety when we're in these situations. Because we do get a lot of these projected anger and some of it does become quite violent in nature, even though the person may not be physically violent, they certainly would prefer to be if they could get away with it. And so what is happening for us is we're having to deal with these fears and other emotions within us that, uh, that these things trigger. But for yourselves, if you can do the same thing, you don't need to attack a person in return. We just need to own our own emotions. Owning your own emotions, remember I said here with the law of desire, free will and cause effect and law of attraction, all these laws, 
Owning your own emotions is an act of love towards yourself. It is one way, in fact, it is almost the best way, aside from receiving divine love, it is the best way to love yourself. Does that make sense? Now, obviously, longing to God for divine love is the ultimately best way to love yourself. And that is going to actually help you with every other thing. But obviously, you can't feel God's love entering you unless you're actually owning and feeling all of your own emotions. So that's why it's such an important factor. Now, what I've been trying to do myself is to work my way through these groups of emotions of unworthiness and the groups of emotions that surround this issue of of self-love. So I'm trying to be more and more loving with myself. The issue, the operative word is trying for myself. The reason why is because I'm not yet getting at all of the causal emotion inside of myself as to why I still feel unloving about myself. Does that make sense? And this is the same issue you, you, many of you are facing. Many of you are facing with this issue of, of self-love, the fact that we know here that we need to love ourselves more. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We know here that we need to act more lovingly towards myself, but there's still this emotion in me that says, I'm not worth it, or I'm not valuable, or nobody cares about me, or those kind of emotions that are still in here. And it's those emotions that have to come out of me before I will actually be in a space where I can fully love myself. Now, because of that, it's very, very difficult to progress from a condition of sin into a condition of one Because one of the biggest things we have to deal with is the next thing I wanted to discuss. And that is the law of forgiveness. One of the things I've had to learn myself, and I'm still in the process of doing it, is learning to forgive myself for not being the person that I wanted to be or that I feel I should be. And many of you need to do the same for yourself. To forgive yourself for all the things in the past that have happened that you weren't happy with what you did. You see... Part of forgiving yourself, remember, is to feel all of your own emotions about the past. Remember, most of these emotions we haven't felt. What we've done is we've denied them, suppressed them, controlled them, and pushed them all down, right? What we need to do is to feel the feelings, which is a process of forgiving ourselves. Now, most of us on the path learn how to forgive another person before we learn how to forgive ourselves. But the reality is that until we forgive ourselves, we can't really forgive anyone. And so what I would suggest for you, and this is something that I'm trying to practice myself, is to get all of those things that you're disappointed about yourself about And all of those things in your life that you're really unhappy about and you feel ashamed of doing, and all of those things in your life where you feel like you've just been a bad person or been terrible towards other people, and all of those things, just gather them all together and allow yourself to talk to God about it, all of those things. And allow yourself to go through this process of forgiving yourself for those things. Now, when you do that, you'll feel a lot of emotion. You'll feel a lot of underlying emotional feelings. And often the biggest emotions that I've had to process myself have been these groups of emotions about how bad I feel I am. And for many of you, it's the same. For many of you, the thing that's actually stopping divine love from entering you as much as it could enter you is because you are unable to do what God has already done for you. What God has already done for you is forgiven you. God did that the moment you did any of these things. But you have been unable to forgive yourself. Can you see that? 
And so you hold on to shame. And when you hold on to something like shame, all it needs is a little pinprick, you know, where somebody puts a little pin in you and says, here, see this shame here? And you react violently because, you know, they just exposed your shame. But if you'd forgiven yourself for your own shame, would you react violently anymore? No. And when you're upset because somebody just exposed an emotion in you and you start hurting yourself because of your law of attraction still bringing you crap into your life and, and all of those kind of feelings, if you had loved yourself, do you feel you would feel that emotion anymore? No. Can you see how the act of forgiving yourself is just going to be such a powerful, powerful thing that happens? Now, most of us avoid forgiving ourselves for lots of different reasons. But some of the most primary reasons of very deep childhood harm that's been dumped on us emotionally from our environment about how bad we are. You're never going to amount to anything, that kind of emotion. You're never going to be as good as that person over there. Every single thing almost in this life is about competition. Remember the school sports days? Uh, how many of you actually won an event? Uh, okay. The rest of you, how did you feel when they won that event? <laughs> did you feel as good as somebody or worse than somebody? Uh, for many of us, we felt worse. The whole idea of competition is about creating someone who's worse than the other, isn't it? Setting up who is the best automatically means that there's someone that mustn't be the best. Right? And so these feelings, like we, we finish up carrying around these whole groups of feelings inside of ourselves where we're just not as good as what we ever wanted to be. And then we punish ourselves every time we don't achieve what we believed we should have achieved. And as a result of that, we get into this state where we can't forgive ourselves. And we're carrying around this burden of what we should have been that constantly, constantly affects us in every single thing that we do. And then, of course, the law of attraction is there to expose that emotion. right? And so we get a lot of events saying to us, no, you're not good enough. No, you're not good enough again, and so forth, because we just don't want to feel the emotion. We don't want to go through the process of forgiving ourselves for not being as good as what we thought we should be or when it really gets down to it, for not being as good as what our environment or our parents thought we should be. That's really where it came from. So like yourselves, I'm working my way through this law of forgiveness, this forgiveness of myself for not being the person that I once was. Now, that brings up the next part of this law of love, and that is the law of mercy. And remember, the two are very much tied into, that, into each other. And remember, um, I might just read the, de the definition that I've written in the outline. I've said, Mercy or grace is my choice to understand by letting go of the emotions that I'm forgiven even though I've sinned against God, others and myself, as long as I have, depended, uh, have demonstrated a repentant spirit. So be, you can be merciful towards yourself. A person who's merciful towards themselves doesn't judge themselves for taking 25 years to get to a space that could have taken three months. They don't judge themselves about that. But they might have some emotions about that. They might need to cry about that. Does that make sense? And when they cry about that and release that, then they will have a feeling of mercy towards themselves. You can't be merciful with others very well if you're not merciful towards yourself either. Can you see why? Like if I'm holding on to emotions within myself where I can't forgive myself, and then I know I've done these things in the past, but I can't ever let them go because I feel like I'm constantly judging myself because of them, then do you think I can easily let it go when somebody else does something to me? It's going to be pretty hard, isn't it? Because I can't even let go of what I've done to me. So these two qualities are really core issues to allow yourself to feel in terms of loving yourself. Karen? 
probably a stupid question, but I mean, intellectually forgiving yourself is not going to work. So how do you emotionally forgive yourself? You emotionally forgive yourself by feeling the emotions about these things. So for instance, example, if I feel a deep sense of personal shame about, you know, when I was seven years old and I got caught touching a, a little girl's vagina, you know, because uh, w there was a little bit of sexual play between myself and another girl and I got caught doing it when I was seven years of age. And then I got all these terrible projections of shame and anger and everything from my parents or from both parents or whatever. What that's done is it's locked up the emotion in me. To forgive myself, what I need to do is feel that emotion. When I, feel, when I allow myself to feel that emotion, then I can pray to God for the clearing of that emotion. And when I allow myself to feel it, I am forgiving myself. And in fact, in the Paget Matches, it says that forgiveness is forgetfulness. What that means is that you will actually be able to remember every event in your life and not feel a sense of personal shame about it because you've forgiven yourself for it. Now, you know, every one of us has things that we've done that we're not happy about, right? That we're ashamed of doing. And when we forgive ourselves, we feel the emotion of that. And when the emotion of that is gone, you'll be in a state where you can remember the event, but not have the emotion associated with the event still inside of you. Then you've forgiven yourself. Now, of course, God can help you so much through this process because God is going to help you with forgiveness when you project and desire God's love to enter you, and also are willing to feel the emotions of anything you've done, you're in a state of repentance. And repentance is a part of this process in terms of receiving grace. So you can actually forget the emotion very rapidly on the divine love path. On the natural love path, you can't forget the emotion rapidly. Anything that you've created, you will need to get to the point of forgetfulness of, and that may take hundreds of years for some things, or even thousands of years for some things. Imagine if you murdered somebody, how much that would play on your mind and on your emotions for a long period of time. It would play on your mind and emotions for a long period, wouldn't it, if you had murdered somebody? So, so that being the case, if you went through this process on the natural love path, you would have to get to the point where you can remember the event still, but no longer feel the emotion of it anymore. And I don't mean just your emotion of it. I mean the emotion is of the people who you harmed of it as well. That's the law of compensation. But on the divine love path, you can actually feel about the event and talk to God about the feelings that you have about the event and allow yourself to feel the emotions. And then God's love can come and take away the emotional memory of the event. So you can actually get to a point that in one week's time, Many of these things you're ashamed of, you will no longer feel a sense of shame of. And in fact, you'll be able to speak of them openly when you're helping others. If I can give you some uh, illustrations about that. In the spirit world, uh, many of you have heard of the founder of the Lutheran faith, Luther. Well, when Luther was on earth, he had lots of emotions towards women that were very, very damaging. Not quite as damaging as some of the perhaps Catholic church teachings or Catholic church popes that they had, but still very damaging. And so when he passed, obviously, he realized at some point that he had all of these projections that he'd done to thousands and thousands of women that read his material. Can you imagine that, that you'd actually spoken about one gender and in a terribly derogatory way and taught thousands and thousands of men to feel the same way about their women? and taught thousands and thousands of women that they were, you know, neg they were lesser than the man. Imagine how you'd feel with that emotion weighing on you. Now, what he needed to do, he got into a state of repentance about that, where he felt that emotion and talked to God about that, and so God could help him through the process of releasing that emotion. And when he released that emotion, now I'm talking about my spirit friend in the spirit world in the celestial kingdom, Luther, and he knows I'm talking about him and he's saying everything he says is true about me. That's what I was like 
but he has no emotional hurt about that inside of himself anymore. So in the end, I can talk about any one of you and you can talk about me to your heart's content and you can say all these terrible things about me. Mind you, which a lot of people are starting to do, right? And, and you can say all these terrible things about me and in the end, if I am in a state of forgiveness of myself, what you say about me, even if it's true, will no longer feel hurtful towards me. Can you see that? It's a very powerful place to be, isn't it? To be in a state where anybody can say anything about you, true or false, and it has no emotional effect on you. And if it's true, you can say, that's true. I did do that. Just like I said earlier with my son, you know, that I smacked him 21 times. I actually counted how many times. That's how I know. I can remember doing it. I can, I can remember counting how many times. It, and I thought, not that it was funny, but I just thought it was his stubbornness. I thought, there's my little son, you know, two and a half years of age, and he's just a stubborn person and he doesn't get it. That was my emotion. And I can talk about that emotion. And if I still have a feeling about it, I haven't forgiven myself for what I did. When I forgive myself for what I did, I will no longer have a feeling about that. Does that make sense to everyone? And I'm not saying it's a denial of your emotional state because it's impossible for you to deny your emotional state if you're truthful. What I'm talking about is that it's a real state once you actually can feel about these things that have happened. Uh, AJ, so say you get into grief and you're feeling the grief over any issue. Yep. And like repentance and you're feeling remorse for it, is um, like mercy and forgiveness, is that, are they like just like automatically come in like you don't have to think, oh, I better focus on forgiving myself now because, you know, it, it's sort of, is it like an automatic thing where yes. you don't really have to focus on it? Like it, That's just right. Do the, if you talk to God through the processes, it is an automatic thing. The reason why it's an automatic thing is our soul's built in such a way and God's laws are built in such a way that when we get into a state of repentance, we automatically activate different parts of God's soul and we automatically activate grace just by the action itself, just by the feeling of remorse within ourselves. We automatically activate these emotions from God. And it's a bit like... If you can imagine you had a child and your child has gone along and kicked another child. Now, you would really, really like that child to be sorry for what it's done and to understand all the things that it's done and why, wouldn't you? And you would like that child to never do it again as well. Now, you imagine if that child come to that conclusion and actually worked through the issues all by itself and was willing to do that, how would you feel about that child? It would be just amazing, yeah. wouldn't it? You'd just have this fantastic feeling of pride and love for that child. Well, that's how God feels about you when you do the same thing. He just, he, God's heart leaps when you do that. And you see, all of God's laws are actually, the way God's created all of her laws is so that you can do that. And that when you do that, there is an instant reward for doing it that way as well. That's the way God's created all of her laws. So it's a beautiful thing. That sort, of, sort of like that, that peaceful feeling? That yes. Yeah. yeah. And so you'll get these feelings of peace that will overwhelm you after you've gone through the process. And you'll also be able to then speak openly about what you've done in the past without feeling resentful that other people are still bringing it up, without feeling resentful of your own shame and without punishing yourself or others because of them bringing it up you will just feel a sense of peace about it. If you don't feel a sense of peace about it, then you are yet to forgive yourself and you are yet to be forgiven. And so, so it's an easy way to tell that we haven't yet dealt with the issue. So for me, I'm yet to forgive myself for what I currently am. And I still need to go through that process um, because there's this huge judgment inside of me about what I used to be and what I currently am. And of course the irony of it is that I'll never be what I used to be while I hold on to this emotion. So it's a sort of a, one of those catch-22 emotions, isn't it? 
where I'll never be what I used to be because I'm still punishing myself for what I am and, and, and it just gets into that cycle. And we need to stop those kind of cycles happening within ourselves where we can never be the best we could be because we're still punishing ourselves for what we did 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago. All we need to do is feel the emotion of it and release the emotion of it. And as we do that and we feel those feelings of God's, wanting God's love to enter us, God's love just enters us and helps us work through all of that emotionally. And we come out the other end feeling peace. It, Paul talked talk about in the Bible, he said, the peace of God that excels all thought. There is no thought you can do, nothing you can think, that is ever going to get you to this state of peace. Right? The peace of God excels all thought. It's, far, it's, it, it's better than all thought, and it comes from this desire and passion and emotion within yourself to feel all of these things and forgive yourself. And it's such a powerful thing you can do, not only for yourself but for everyone else. And this is why forgiving of yourself changes people around you. It changes your law of attraction completely. Can you see? Like, If I have an emotion inside of myself where I feel shame about what I have done inside of me, then my law of attraction is going to be triggering the shame, triggering the shame, triggering the shame, triggering the shame. Everyone's going to expose the shame in me. That will be my law of attraction. Can you see that? But as soon as I'm open about what I've done and, and put it out there on the table for everyone to see and actually start feeling my emotions about what I've done and actually go through the process of feeling them to completion and feeling sorry and remorseful of what I've done, what happens now? That causal emotion inside of me, that shame, no longer exists. So what, what's going to happen to my law of attraction? I'm no longer going to attract people triggering shame. People, can you see that? I'm no longer going to attract it because there is no shame left in me to be triggered. And I can actually then be completely happy within myself about myself. And so it's such a powerful, powerful tool, this act of forgiveness of yourself and having mercy with yourself. And that doesn't mean, though, that we actually go down the track of saying, you know, I automatically forgive myself for everything I've ever done and, and that all happens just in a day and I'm all happy now, everything's fine. Because obviously if I feel that, then I obviously don't see the importance of the things I've done. And just like the example I gave of the father who's looking at the child who kicked the other child, right? the child at some point needs to see the importance of what they've done. The fact that the act of hurting the other child has actually harmed the other child. It's actually caused damage to them. It's caused emotional damage as well as physical damage to them. And I, the child, needs to feel that. And when the child feels that, the father or the mother can feel this beautiful feeling of love for the child quite easily. If the child refuses to do that, then the father or mother might have love for them, but they've also got a lot of hope in them, haven't they, at the same time, that the child will eventually see the truth, that they've actually taken an act to harm another. And so we need to also remember with these things is don't let yourself off the hook for things that you have no intention of not repeating. So let, can I say that again in a bit more? With the too many double negatives. <laughs> Only let yourself off the hook for things that you know you've dealt with completely emotionally. If you know you haven't dealt with it completely emotionally, then focus on dealing with it completely emotionally. Not punishing yourself, because you don't need to do that. The laws of God are already in action and you're already experiencing the consequences of every time you break one of them. You don't need to do more than that. God's laws automatically are correcting you. Does that make sense? So there's no need to punish yourself, but there is a need to feel what we're feeling, what we've done, the results of what we've done. And so we need to let ourselves off the hook, which is an act of forgiveness and mercy towards ourselves, when we feel these deep feelings of repentance within ourselves. Now that will automatically happen when you feel repentance and remorse. You'll feel this peace that comes from God enter you. You will feel it. And if you're not feeling it yet, then the process of forgiveness and mercy is not complete in you. 
So just allow it to occur until it's complete in you. They are two really important laws that demonstrate your love of self. Can you see that the whole world has an issue with this problem, doesn't it? And if we can be leaders in demonstrating these emotions towards ourselves, we'll go a long way to curing every ill of the world. You also will go a long way to curing the fact that you want to respond to their pain or to other people's projection of pain. So how many of you have felt this emotion? I know there's been times when I've felt it over the last six years of you're getting this barrage of crap from somebody, right? anger, resentment, rage. And how many of you have felt this thing of, I just wish they'd get the truth. They don't see it my way or whatever it is. You know, and you, and you have all these feelings like, I just wish they'd stop. I just want them to stop. And how many of you have even been in a situation where you've been walking away from the person and are still yelling and screaming at you, not wanting to stop? And how does that feel to you? Well, see, when you forgive yourself, that'll all stop. A whole lot of that will stop. Can you see why? Because they're only doing it because there's these feelings in you that are still feeling like there's anything wrong with you inside of yourself. And they're just triggering that. So allow yourself to feel those emotions of forgiveness towards yourself and being merciful with yourself when you, ha when you know you are sorry and repentant. When you do that, you are becoming like God because that's how God feels about you when you get into that state. Just like if you had a child who'd kicked another child and the child then went through these feelings of remorse, went through these feelings, it, it knew what it'd done, saying sorry to the person, you would be so proud of that child. You'd know that they're never going to do it again, wouldn't you? And that's how God feels about you when you do the same thing. Okay. So what's next? There's the laws. Natural love. Now, there's a few things in this little section that I'd like to read out to you. Um, because these, this is sort of trying to put these things into, a pra into practical situations, if you like. Because in the end, that's what we want to do, isn't it? Demonstrate love to ourselves in practical situations. So we also, one thing we also need to do is recognize inside of ourselves when we're not demonstrating to our love to ourselves in a practical situation so that at least we can begin to identify the emotional reason why we're not. Because a lot of times we, fi we finish up skipping over. Do you know what I mean? We, like something happens that, that is an unloving situation to ourselves, we just fall straight into the mould that, er that we've been in since childhood. Bang! Do the normal rote thing that we would normally do. Blah, 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 and, and then we come out of it thinking, what did I just do? Right. And what we want to do is at least start having some intellectual awareness of what's happening. So there's three things to remember. Notice how these laws affect my love for myself. Three things to remember. The love of myself spiritually means that I care for my connection with God. So every time you love yourself on a spiritual level, you're caring about your relationship with God. In other words, you don't say... Ah, oh, stuff it. You know, this week I've just had enough of this stuff. You know, this spiritual stuff's just driving me nuts. And uh, no, I'm going to just give up it for a couple of weeks, you know, see what happens. You won't feel like that when you've dealt with the emotions that cause you to not love yourself spiritually. Does that make sense? Now, you can sure, certainly feel like that before then, and you need to do something about it if you feel like that. But understand that when you love yourself completely spiritually, you won't do that. Your love of God and God's love for you is going to be the most precious relationship in your life. 
It won't matter what anybody else thinks about you. It won't matter what your family does with you. It won't matter what your friends do with you or think about you. Your relationship with God will be more important. It won't matter what your religion says. It won't matter what your politics say. It won't matter any of those. It won't matter how you even feel sexually. You will still be focused on your relationship with God as your number one thing, if you love yourself spiritually. The second thing is if you love yourself emotionally, you will care for and allow yourself to experience all of your own emotions in every single possible situation. Whoa, it's like, that means at work, and I'm triggered emotionally, I'm going to feel my emotion at work. So let's say it's rage. What do I do with that? <laughs> right, so uh, work might have to have a sorrow of series of phone books if that's the case. And uh, so you get out your rubber hose at work and away you go. <laughs> and it all looks really bad, right, to everyone else. What's wrong with this woman? Gee whiz. What's wrong with that crazy man again? You know, he's off again, you know. And yet we won't even worry about that when we're in this state of pure love of self. Does that make sense? Now, your boss will, your friends will, your family will. Everybody will if they're not in that state themselves. But can you see in the end, where we're targeting is a world like this, isn't it? So we want a world where we're at work, we can feel our emotions, we're at home, we feel our emotions, we're at school, we feel our emotions. We want a world where we just be ourselves wherever we be, wherever we are. It begins with loving of yourself, which means feeling all of your own emotions. The third thing you notice is feeling your emotions, sorry, feeling or caring for yourself physically. So I go, hmm, yeah, yeah, right at the moment, there's a bit of tubbiness starting around here. It's just like slowly growing, I can feel it there, you know. Something's going on, right? And then when it gets a bit bigger and a bit bigger, and I have been a bit bigger in my life for like, and I'm feeling more of that. And I'm going, yeah, I mustn't be loving myself too much. And I'm there puffing away on my cigarette and I'm feeling, I'm not, oh, there I'm sitting down in front of the telly watching a video every single day rather than being able to create things around me and I'm trying to live my life through other people's lives. And so I'm, I'm feeling about that. And can you see when I start caring for myself physically, I'll start realising that. And in the end, when I care for myself completely physically, I'll get to the stage where I'll never do anything that would damage my body, physical body or spirit body. Wow, like that means, you know, all those lotions and potions you put on your face that, that have got all these poisons in them, you won't do that anymore. You'll go and get some lotions and potions perhaps that have got no poison in them and do it, <laughs> maybe. But you certainly won't do it with ones that have got poison in them. That means that you won't wash your hair with the... Uh, you know, all these poisons either. You know, just because you like the brand. You won't do that anymore. It'll be automatic because you'll feel that, hang on a sec, there's something wrong with this. It's not loving me. When you go to take that alcoholic drink and you smell the alcohol and you think, yep, a few million brain cells there, like just gone, just by if I take this drink. Do you think you'll want to take it then if you really loved yourself? Do you, what do you think? Do you think you would? And there's AJ now saying, oh, I've got to give a drink as well. Oh, boy. I, said, I thought there's enough. We're already going to, it's just too much, right? No, what I'm saying is you will want to do that. So if you don't want to do that yet, it's because you don't love yourself yet. Because when you get to this, and I'm not suggesting to do it to make out you love yourself and stop drinking. Right? If you want to drink, drink. That's up to you. But don't make out you love yourself doing it. Because those, those alcohol, that alcohol in there, that's killing your brain cells, right? You wouldn't choose to do that purposefully, would you? Unknowingly, perhaps, but purposefully, if you loved yourself, would you choose that? No. So, but that's okay if you're doing it now. I'm not judging any of that. What I'm saying is that if you loved yourself, you wouldn't do it. So... Look at why. Why am I having this alcohol that I know is killing a few million brain cells every time I have a zip? What's going on inside of me that causes me to feel this? Ah, it's the stress that I'm under right now. I need this to relax. Why do I need this to relax? Ah, 
my life's too stressful. <laughs> I need to do something about my life, right? Rather than have this alcoholic drink, I need to put this drink down over there for a moment and go over here and fix up what it is that's creating all this stress inside of me. Oh, no. It's my relationship with my husband or wife that's causing all this stress. So go and do something about your relationship with your husband or wife, you see? Follow through with these things. You can you see even just a little zip of alcohol is carving over many times a whole series of emotions. And I can just relax with it. And oh, now I have a sense of peace. Oh, all of a sudden my partner looks a lot better than she looked five minutes before. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Mary always looks good, but anyway. Yeah. But, but then, oh, you know, oh, the situation looks better now. And, oh, another drink. Yeah, it looks really good now. Hello. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Like, and what we're doing is just avoiding, avoiding the underlying stress and pressure and everything that, and all we're doing. And then the next night, I'm feeling, wow, I'm feeling heaviness again of all my life again, crouching in on me. Oh, what did I do last night? I had a drink. That's a good idea. So I have another one. And we do that, don't we? Until we get to the stage where we become addicted to something, just because we need to avoid our life. Don't avoid your life. If you love yourself, you don't avoid your life. You actually embrace your life. And if you can't embrace your life, then get rid of the things you can't embrace. That's what you do, isn't it, if you love yourself. You see, love of others, if I think about those three things, love of myself, if I think about those three things, I will stop doing a whole heap of things if I feel the underlying emotional reasons why I do it. So I'm not suggesting that you just go, go, go out now and say, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm not doing that anymore, I'm not doing it. Many of you still feel like doing it. So don't stop doing it if that's what you feel like doing because that's the law of desire, right? You're allowed to desire what you have even if it's in disharmony with love. I'm not suggesting that you can't. What I'm suggesting is allow yourself to look at the emotional reasons inside of yourself as to why you would want to treat yourself badly. And you know, most of the time it's because we're avoiding a whole group of emotions or situations. We're avoiding the fact that we're not as close with my wife as I want to be or my husband as I want to be. I'm avoiding the fact that actually I feel quite sad about my job. My job is really stressing me and getting me down. I'm not doing anything about it because I don't love myself. Why don't I love, let myself feel about why I don't love myself enough to do something about that? Let myself see why I don't love myself enough to tell the truth to everyone around me. So, you know, I go home and visit mum, and mum's saying, do this, do that, do this, do that, like she has for the last 40 years that I've been alive. And all I do is fit into the groove. And I say, and I say to myself, it's only a week. It will be okay. Once I get home, I'll be fine. But you're not loving yourself in that situation, are you? So stop doing that and look at the emotional reason why. Ah, it's the emotion inside of myself that I have. Wow, look at that. Actually, I feel that mum's going to punish me if I don't do what I want. Now, your mum, like, you might be a grown man, 40 years of age, nice solid build, you know, four inches higher than I am or six inches higher than I am, and you're still being led by mummy, right? Because you're afraid that mummy will disapprove of you. Where does that come from? That's not a 40-year-old man's emotions. That's... That's a four-year-old boy's emotions that needs to be released. Can you see that? And if I love myself, I'll allow myself to see that happening, but I can't do that unless I'm in this space of truth and love with myself. It's so powerful once you get into this space inside of yourself of a space of truth and love towards yourself. So you notice in many of the um, examples I've given there how these laws affect you. I don't respond to others' demands for my love. I don't respond to others expecting my love. I don't allow others to manipulate and control my actions. If others question me with the emotions within them of rage, anger, jealousy, resentment, goading, judgment, then I'm loving to myself if I respond. A lot of people have been confused, you know, in my last uh, few hours before I passed in the first century. They've been confused because um, I stood before different people, Herod and Pilate, in, and in the Sanhedrin, in total silence. And I did that because I loved myself. 
Because what was being projected at me was huge amounts of emotions, not wanting to know truth. They didn't want to know the truth. They wanted to condemn me to death. And they'd already decided in their hearts and in their minds of what they were going to do. Nothing I could say in that situation could change anything. And if I allowed myself to be goaded into reply, or even to be violently abused into a reply, I wouldn't be loving myself. So I didn't. Does that make sense? And you will do the same in the future. You will do the same as that, where you're in situations where people are trying to pressure you and push you around and get you to do things that are unloving to yourself. And you'll be in enough space of love of yourself that no matter what damage they bring to bear towards you, you will not break your love of self. So you will not break your love of God, but you also will not break your love of self. If you broke your love of self, you automatically break your relationship with God. So you won't do either. And even if you die in that state, you still won't do it. Even if you're threatened with death, you won't do it. Because that's how much you love yourself. And that's uh, how I felt then. And I feel quite judgmental about myself that it's not how I feel now at times. you know. So what we need to do is work through these groups of emotions that allow our, ourselves to do these things. To actually love yourself completely. Allow yourself to ponder about loving yourself completely. Now tomorrow's discussion is going to be about how we can in, in, to join these issues of love of self and love of others into practical situations with our relationship with our partner. Right? So that's what it's going to do tomorrow. But to really get the understanding of what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, really we need to understand these principles about love of self and love of others. Can you see that? And so my suggestion is to have a few, have some feelings about, over the, over the next 24 hours, have some feelings about how you haven't been loving to yourself in your life. And have some feelings about why you haven't demonstrated that love to yourself. You may find that the why is because you're afraid of something. You may find that the why is because you've got this sadness in you and that you can't seem to relieve. You may find that the why is because you're so ashamed of yourself and you need to forgive yourself more. You may find that the why is to do with all sorts of issues regarding your life that you are not allowing yourself to address. For instance, issues of truth, where you can't be truthful with another because you're afraid of what that will do in your own, to your own life. And often what we do is we prevent our own progression just by shutting down what we really feel about our situation and not loving ourselves. So have a really good look at what's going on inside of yourself. You see, the whole issue of divine truth, which is the last issue of the laws of truth that we want to discuss, is about us getting into this state inside of ourselves where the truth, and we understand emotionally, that it's the truth that's going to set our entire life free. So what we need to do to, set, to have the truth set our life free is to actually feel everything inside of ourselves truthfully. That means no longer ignoring anymore how we truly feel about every situation in our life. So if I'm not happy in my marriage, I need to stop ignoring that fact. And I, say to, and I need to stop saying to myself, oh, but my law of attraction here is wonderful, my law of attraction there is wonderful, my law, and I'm actually having quite a good life, but oh, my marriage, yeah, well, that doesn't feel that good. I need to stop doing that and I need to start addressing the issue in truth. Why doesn't it feel that good? What's going on inside of me emotionally? What's going inside of my partner emotionally? Can we deal with these things together? Do we really want to split up? Do we even really want to be together? Like, or are we just living with each other because it's too hard to do anything else? What am I afraid of? Am I afraid of splitting half of my wealth? Am I afraid of, you know, there's lots of things we could be afraid of. Afraid of my children judging me because I want to leave my wife. 
and I need to work through all of those things emotionally and stop avoiding them if I want to be in truth. And if I have this deep love for truth, if I respect this law of truth in my life, then I will start being truthful in all of my relationships. And I'm not talking about just the truth intellectually. I'm talking about feeling my emotions about what I feel is the truth. And even coming down to the fact of looking at it and saying, is this God's truth or is this just my truth? Because a lot of times they're two very, very different things, God's truth and my truth. Like I've had times when my truth have been totally the opposite of God's truth. And I'm saying I've had hundreds of times where that's been the case uh, in the last 46 years. So allow yourself to look at how the truth is affecting your life and whether you want to live it and what emotions inside of you are preventing you from living the truth. If you love yourself, you will at least give yourself that gift. Can you see how much love of self is like, it just is so all-encompassing in a lot of areas in our life. So if you can, over the coming months, start looking at this issue of love of self in a lot more deeper way, the biggest hurt in the human race is this lack of love of self and this inability to forgive even yourself, let alone anyone else. All right? And if you can allow yourself to work through that emotionally by feeling the emotions that caught, that you have about yourself, the shame you feel about yourself, the guilt you have towards yourself, all of these different emotions you have about yourself, the sadness that you have about yourself, how you haven't realized your potential and how you feel about that inside of yourself, and you forgive yourself for all of those things by feeling those emotions and releasing them and talking to God and receiving the divine love flow through into you, what will happen is in the end you will not remember those emotions anymore. And you'll be able to remember every single thing, every single event in your life, and you will not have any judgment of yourself about it. And you will feel that you're, and you not think, you will feel that you are the same as every other person you will actually feel that you're the same as the persons who are right now living up in the 22nd sphere state in an alignment condition and you will feel that you're equal to them. Imagine that, like, that. how many times today on earth do you feel you're not equal to somebody? Like, why do we glorify people on earth? Why do we treat them differently? Because we feel we're not equal to them. Imagine if you released all the emotions in yourself and forgave yourself for everything that you feel ashamed about in your life to get to a point where you actually now feel inside of yourself that you are the same as equal inside of yourself as an emotion as anyone else. And then somebody comes along and says, oh, when you were on earth or you know, a few years ago, when you were on earth, um, you did this and you did that and you did this and you did that and you killed this and you and you say yes I did and not feel any more guilt or shame or any of those emotions about it because you've released all of that through a process of forgiving yourself I'm not saying you ignore it all I'm saying you've released it all and so you'll be able to get to the state where I can talk about you and you can talk about me to anyone in sundry Right, and we will never ever fight because of it. And I can say, you know, that guy over there, he did this and he did that, and that guy over there, yes, says, but yep, I did that, and not feel bad about himself. And you can say, you know, that AJ, you know, when he, when his boys were little, he belted his son twenty-one times in a row. That's abuse. And I can say, yes, I did that, and not feel bad about myself anymore because I've worked through the emotion of that and forgiven myself. It's a pretty powerful place, isn't it, if you love yourself that much. Now, if you love yourself that much, then you know what? You've now caught up to how much God loves you. Because right at the moment, when it comes to how God loves you and how you love yourself, you're playing a lot of catch-up. Because God loves you far more than you can even conceive at the moment 
And until you love yourself the same amount, you won't understand how much God loves you. So this whole process is about getting to the point of where we feel like God can love us to the degree that he can. And can you see how this impacts upon the prayer for divine love? You remember in the prayer, if you read the words to the prayer, it talks about the issue of worthiness. And it raises this issue of worthiness with you. The issue of worthiness is the main reason why no one since I was on earth in the first century, it's the main reason why no one since then has been in a state of one with God while they're on earth. <coughs> the issue of unworthiness is the reason why. And like I am now feeling the power of that um, emotion myself, feeling how much it affects every aspect of my life my relationship with Mary, my relationship with other people, how much law of attraction is going on, my relationship with spirits who want to be angry with me. Most of them will just go away once they realise that they can't make me feel shamed of myself anymore because I've forgiven myself. Does that make sense? But at the moment, they're going to keep coming and coming and coming until I've worked through that emotion. And I need to understand that inside of myself and spend this time emotionally working my way through those groups of emotions. So hopefully this discussion that we've had of God's laws, the introduction first, and then this discussion we had about a few weeks ago about the laws governing the love of others, and this discussion that we've had today about the laws governing the love of self, have sort of opened up a whole group of areas for you that you can actually look at yourself. And, and instead of looking at yourself with judgment, criticism, or punishment, you can start looking at yourself in terms of feeling the underlying emotions and working your way through to a place of forgiveness and repentance with them. And tomorrow what we'll try to do is incorporate all of these principles, if you like, into four, initially four basic things that we can ask ourselves in any interaction. And then there'll be another, so four basic things to do with the law of love and there'll be four basic things to do with the laws of desire that we'll ask ourselves as well in every interaction. Because in the end, these questions will help us expose any emotions that prevent us from being loving to ourselves or another. And you'll be surprised when you actually look at them and start asking yourself these questions, how quickly your relationships will be exposed as either loving or unloving. And then you will have the question to ask yourself of, what do I do about it? And what you do about it, of course, depends on your free will. Like you're allowed to do anything you want, including nothing. But at least if you know and can ask the questions at the soul level about these matters, you can see why you have pain. You see, remember we said right at the beginning of this series of discussions that when I break God's laws, so when I'm breaking God's laws at the soul level, I'm breaking God's laws, I am actually going to experience the pain and suffering of that. So I can say to myself, I am not going to change anything if that's what I want. I have the free will to do that. But then I need to also ask myself, and our spirit friends with us need to also ask themselves, if they're sitting in the hells of the, of the first sphere still, why would I want that for myself? Why would I want to continue to experience pain and suffering? Why would I want to actually not change when I've got this beautiful opportunity to change and be supported by a group of people who want to change with me. Like, it doesn't really make much sense, does it, if, if we're really loving ourselves to do that. So what I would like you to do, perhaps over the coming weeks, if you want to, is allow yourself to ponder about those things. And uh, I and Mary hopefully will do the same, because both of us have... Uh, quite a lot of self-love issues to work our way through as well. And uh, over the coming months, we should notice a fair big, fairly big change in ourselves and in the others that are coming along as well to groups such as these. And I think it will have such an also positive effect in the spirit world as well. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's discussion. Thanks for your time again today. And tomorrow... Um, it's here again at, uh, at 1 o'clock, and that discussion is about relationships with others, incorporating these things. Um, Mary and I would like to thank you for your donations. 
and would also like to thank you too for a lot of the expressions that you're giving us uh, as well of support and love and encouragement uh, because uh, we really do appreciate those as well. Both of us are going personally through some difficult times, uh, mostly because of projections of anger uh, from others that it's triggering these unworthy emotions that we feel inside of ourselves. And so um, we're, work we're wanting to work through those things over the coming weeks. Anyway, I'll thank you for your time, guys, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Sorry, Mary? Do I want them to? Oh, one thing Mary's pointing out that I forgot. Um, um, there's quite a few things that I want to present tomorrow that uh, were letters that I've written in the past. And, um, and obviously we're not going to be able to print up those things because uh, to do it for 120 people or so is going to be quite not, not very cost effective. So what, what we're, we're thinking of doing is we'll, we'll email those documents to you. They'll be PDF documents. And so there'll be tomorrow there'll be an outline and then there'll be PDF documents uh, that we'll email to you uh, that contain letters that I might that I'll, some portions of which I'll read to you tomorrow. Um, so, so if you just bear that in mind, and we pro I might even try to send out. It's quite easy for me to send that out tonight. So, you might even receive some of those before you the group tomorrow. Um, that was all. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Also. Um, on the website, under the forum section, I think it is, the, the crux of our talk tomorrow, by the way, if you want to look it up in the morning or whatever, is, going to, is already on the website under, under commentaries by the 14 in the, web, in the web board, commentaries by the 14, and underneath there, there's a list of commentaries by myself, and, and I think it's called... Relationships. I think it's just called relationships. So my suggestion is have a read of that. It's a letter that I sent out years ago, for, uh, four years ago. Um, my suggestion is you have a read of that if you want to do a little bit of homework for tomorrow's discussion. So there's a tab commentaries by the 14, and then under that you'll see it as a line, commentaries by the 14. And if you click in there, then you, underneath there you'll see commentaries. I think it might be by Jesus or, or it might be just all in a list, and you could, there'll be one called Relationships, and you can just grab that and have a read. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for your time, guys. Catch you later. <laughs>